Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For your enjoyment, the real Gary Shootout is on the web. Hi, everybody. This is Gary Jones alongside Glenn Jones, Jeff Duncan, and Paul Kingsbury. And we're happy to bring it out to you. It's the real Dairy Shootout sponsored by the United Dairymen of Idaho. Our game tonight, the Middleton Vikings and the Bonneville Bees for the 4A state title. We'll go with the non-starters for both squads, starting with the visitors on the scoreboard. First of all, the Bonneville Bees. Junior 5'5", number 12, Megan Anderson. Junior 5'5", number 14, uh, Samantha Gerard. Sophomore 5'4", number 21, Erica Shenton. Senior 5'9", number 23, Kelsey Smith. Senior 5'6", number 32, Dessa Tolman. And a sophomore at 5'10", number 45, Jordan Garner. Now the non-starters for the Vikings. They'll be the home team on the scoreboard. Junior 5'7", number 3, Mackenzie McKeith. Senior 5'10", number 4, Jen Gustin. Junior 5'9", number 10, Ken Hopkins. Junior 5'11", number 11, Kendra Lim. Sophomore 5'7", number 12, Taylor Simmons. Simons, rather. Senior 5'5", number 22, Jenny Foreman. And now the starters for Coach Ryan Herrickfeld in his third year. His bees pitching a perfect season right now. They are defending champs 25 and 0 season. And his five starters. Senior 5'9, five, number 5, Kylie Searle. Uh, senior at 5'10, number 11, Susan Lindley. Senior at 5'5, five, five, number 13, Katie Harker. Senior at 5'7, number 24, Michaela Keck. And a senior at 6 feet, number 34, Miley Garner. Now the Five starters for Coach Andy Jones in his eighth season. A 24-1 and one record. So these teams together, 49-1. and one. I think we've got the two best teams in the state here. Junior at 5'10", number 5, Madeline Lawn. Senior at 5'5", number 15, Brittany Lisi. Senior at 5'9", number 21, Lacey Young. Senior at 5'7", number 32, Emily Hammond. And a senior at 5'11", number 33, Araya. Gonzalez. So in the booth for joining us, because he was at the four A's the whole time, Jeff Duncan. And Jeff, you're a Vegas bookmaker now. You've seen these teams play. Who's your favorite? Uh, if I were to make odds on this game, I'd say Bonneville by about six, only because they have an answer for everything that a team can throw at them. They match up very well with everybody at the point guard, in the post, and on the wing. They can make runs. They have spurt ability. They can make runs 10, 12 points at a time and really enforce teams to play catch-up. Uh, Taylor, number 12 uh, for Middleton. Simmons or Simons? Simmons, I think. Simmons. Okay, great. And, of course, also in the booth with us, Glenn. Got a gut feeling, Glenn? Uh, Middleton, Middleton in overtime. We had an overtime win earlier, if you haven't joined us throughout the day. Richfield won the opening uh, championship, 41-35 for Carey. Clearwater in overtime over Lapway, 51-49. West Jeff won over Soda Springs, 65-46. And Priest Sherbert just won their first title, 45-33 over Kellogg. And a good crowd here now for both squads. Here we go. The jump is controlled by the Bees, and Lindley has it. Bees in their green, Middleton in the white jerseys. At the elbow is Lindley. Loose ball. There's a turnover right away for the Bikes. Nice pass up ahead. Good ball fake and lay it in for Hammond. That's Middleton's game. They're a fast break team. They like to put pressure on the ball and go transition. You know, this might be a loud gym today. This will be the loudest uh, game we've had easily. Biggest look, student section over there we've seen. Right, now, as you, as you look across the way, you're looking at the Middleton fans. And we're on, we're on the Bonneville side, and their side pretty full as well. A lot of green down over on this side. And we got a cool-looking mascot. The bee is down there. Trying to sting Vikings. Lisi gets it to Long. Step on the out-of-bounds stripe. It'll be Bonneville basketball. The, both point guards tonight are exceptional. Probably two of the best at the 4A level. Katie Harker for Bonneville. Brittany Lisi for Middleton. They're both very good. 
these two teams played in this state title game last year. Third year in a row for Middleton. Yeah, Middleton yeah. won twice and lost last year, so a lot of experience uh, on both sides being, being here. Little scoop pass inside the paint, almost got stolen. But the bees hang on, and it's Searle with the basketball. Over to Lindley. She's alone, and she'll score. First bucket for Bonneville, and it's 2-2. Gonzalez with the basketball. She'll kick it up top to Young. Lisi now on the wing. Driving is Young. Shot off glass is good. Well, use your body nicely to shield the ball. Split the defenders and get it off the glass. Four to two. Middleton by two. Six twelve to go. Hope you can pull up a chair and join us on IdahoSports.com. Nice step through. Shot no good. She gets her own rebound though. That's Lindley and what they call that? Jump. Jump ball. The arrow pointing the way of the Middleton Lady Vikes. I tell you, in the last three years, Andy Jones has been on a good run. I, I tried to ask him how many wins he had in the last three years. 24 this year. He thought he had 22 last year. He's pushing 60 wins in three years. I'd say that's fairly good, wouldn't you? That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> to say the that's, least. That's a career for a lot of people at some schools. Jumper, fall away by Searle. No good. Here come the Lady Vikes. Man, do they ever like to run. Up in the front court. A little off-balance shot by Young is good. That's their style. They get up and down the court. They take the ball hard to the basket. Lacey Young, Brittany Lisi, Kendra Lim. They take it hard, and they draw contact, and they draw fouls. Nice pass inside to Garner, and Miley will get her first field goal. Bonneville showing they can uh, do the same. A little tip for Tat in the early going here. 6-4 our score, 5-10 to go, first period of play. And I would think Middleton has a little extra incentive. After losing last year and you go to all those practices and camps, you're determined to come back and not let that happen again. There's going to be a jump ball inside. Well, interesting. One gym, one side of the gym applauding that call, one side of the gym complaining about it. It'll probably be the case on every single whistle you hear tonight. Is this really a gym? It's a big gym. Okay. One of the biggest gyms I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> we got some seats blocked off by the big black curve. We can get more people in here if we wanted. There will be when the Eagles are in town. You getting the Eagles in Eastern Idaho, Jeff? The what? Are you getting the Eagles in Eastern Idaho? They just announced a tour date here, May 18th. Are they playing Idaho Falls or Pocatello? Or oh, they're playing here. I don't know. Oh. But I, I just wondered if you're going to get them in eastern Idaho. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. This is right about where I sat. I think down about four rows when uh, the Stones were here. 4.34 to go. I want you to right there. shout us out. Webcast at idahosports.com. It's an icon on the lower left. Tell us where you are, what city or country. We already have some coming in, too. And uh, we'll get a trivia question to you here soon. And Jeff will be reading all those on the air, all the shout-outs. Ball inbounded to Searle. Now up top to Harker. Searle for three. Front iron, no good. Rebounded by Young. Middle Tim with a two-point lead and the basketball. Posted up is Gonzalez. The ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be Middleton basketball underneath their own hoop. And Gonzalez. Lisi's going to re inbound. Sorry, Gary. Gonzalez and Garner is a good matchup down low. Two good bigs going at it. Driving in the paint. Young. She'll kick it out for a three-pointer on the way. No good by Hammond. And oh. Searles just bowled over. Got an email to read. Shout out to our friends and family in Missouri, Indiana, Tennessee, and Cyprus in the Middle East. From wow. Brad, Dana, and Lacey. Cyprus? Cyprus in the Middle East. Sweet. I haven't been there, but heard it, I heard it's nice. <laughs> I heard it's warm. Yes. <laughs> IdahoSports.com you know, covers the world. A feather just floated down <laughs> from the building here in front of me. Any birds up in those rafters? There's a turnover. It'll be 
Simmons with the basketball. Yeah, we had some Cardinals in here earlier. Was it red? <laughs> the Vikings attacking uh, the Bonneville right now in uh, man to man. I would like to call the chick to chick defense. <clears throat> Lim with it. Crossover, dribble to the free throw line. Over to Simmons. She'll drive. Another three pointer on the way. Didn't draw iron. And the rebound is taken by the by the bees. And here they come. Searle inside. An impossible scoop shot goes in for Garner. Underhanded, off glass, nothing but the bottom of the net. And there's a traveling violation on the Vikings. When Searle had that ball, she drew a crowd and just was heads up enough to get the ball inside. 6-6 six, six our score, 3.09 to go, first period of play. Two nights ago, Searle was 14 for 14 from the line. Oh, she my She is goodness. money. Automatic. Yeah, that was game one. She was just... Yeah, lights out. Well, there's a the girl not to foul when you're in that fouling position at the end of the game. She's doing a lot. 31 points so far in the tournament and double digits and rebounds also, and she dishes out assists. She's a one of those best overall athlete, probably. Lindley wide open for her second field goal. And Bonneville has eight points. Four from Lindley, four from Garner. They lead by two. 2.42 to go. Low scoring first period so far. The girls adjusting to each other and being in a state title dance. Driving all the way down. No good. The offensive putback is good by Gonzalez. Her first field goal. And we're all tied at eight again. There's been some very good games at the Idaho Center today. There's an off-balance shot by Searle, no good. The West Jeff was the only blowout. The rest of our games have been tight. One of them overtime. Nice spin move, baseline. Turn around, Joey Short for Foreman. And Harker will bring the ball over the timeline. Whips the pass to Lindley. Now they go inside. The ball stolen by Simmons. Taylor bringing the ball all the way. Throws it inside. Ball tapped back to the bees, and here they come. A one-on-three fast break. But the trailer gets it. That's Miley Garner, and she lays another lay-in. Miley Garner comes from the weak side. All three defenders went to stop the ball, and Garner snuck in from behind. Buck 31 to go now. Two-point Bonneville lead. There's a turnaround, Jay. No good. Searle with the rebound. Parker with it. Top of the key, she'll hand off. Now goes inside to Garner. That shot no good. Didn't draw iron. Here come the Vikes. What a nice shot off glass for Jenny Foreman. She's got her first field goal. And we're all tied with a minute to go. This is another one that's got the looks that it come, could come down to the last possession. Hope it does. Nothing like that. that Parents was... hate it because they're all dying with heart attacks and stomach aches, but we love it. They played a good game last year right here in the championship, too. There's a pass into the post. Boy, Garner was wide open to turn around if she didn't realize it. Instead, Sir will get one, and it hits the iron. 30 seconds for the Vikes to regain a lead. Sir was a little mad at herself there for missing that. I think she shot, thought she had that shot. There's a three-pointer by Simmons. She ended up on a keister. No foul called. And 15 seconds for the Bees now. Lindley in the corner. Up top to Searle. They'll do a backdoor lob. And a left-handed shot by Garner. No good. But we're going to see our first free throws of the contest. Garner's not quite 100% yet. She had a, an ankle injury late in the year, and she missed a couple games. But she's about 90%. 90% Miley Garner is better than a lot of people's 100%. She's a very good post inside. Last year's 4A player of the year yeah. had torn ligaments in her ankle. Wow. But been scoring uh, very well since she's been back. Most teams can't play her one-on-one. -on -one. They have to have a zone or they have to bring the help weak side to guard Garner. 6.8 ticks to go. Can Middleton get a shot up? And just a hair under seven seconds. We'll see. They got the rebound. Hustling up the floor is Lim. 
The ball stripped from her. It's loose. And there's the buzzer. One quarter's in the books. To B's 11, the Vikings 10. We'll return to the real Derry shootout right after this break. Don't know. Hey, we're back at the Idaho Center, 11-10. B's on top of the Vikings. Emails coming in fast and furious. First of all, good luck to Miley and Joe Garner and all the Bonneville Bees from Dan and Marge in Idaho Falls. And hi to Kristen and Vern in Arizona who are watching. Another warm place. Checking for a couple more. Watching from Idaho Falls. Go Bees from Burke Davis. Ace Garner writes in, thanks for the webcast once again. Miley and Jordan Garner's granddad thinks my girl Miley looks recovered. Laugh out loud. Yes, she's about 90% there. <laughs> my girl Miley, I like that from Grandpa. <laughs> Proud Grandpa watching Miley. Oh, yeah. Mike's had the ball to start this second period of play. Lisi, jump shot, no good. Was taken out of the air by Lawn, and Madeline throws her first field goal in the hole. She'll tell you that was a pass. Assist. Yeah, she wants an assist for that. <laughs> and Middleton has regained a one-point lead. There's a steal. It's Jen Gustin that has the basketball. And she'll give it up to Hopkins. Ken Hopkins, 5'9", junior in the game. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Long rebound. It's going to come out to the corner. We're going to have another jump ball. Another email coming in from Wayne Colston. He says, just watching good basketball on a Saturday afternoon. Go Susan Lindley, go Bees. Only mascot in the state that has Bees are the Bonneville Bees. Declo Hornets, though. There are the Declo yes. Hornets. There's four Vikings. Chalice is one. Middleton another. The Valley Vikings. I can think of three of them. There's one more. Running... One-handed jump shot off the glass, no good. And the Vikes have it. Long with the basketball. Up top to Lisi. Now it looks like they're in a 1-2-2 zone. So well, they'll attack the zone a little different than they do the man. There's some body contact baseline, and there's going to be a foul whistle against the Bees. Another email, Ron and Meredith watching Lacey Young go Vikings. Hi to Norm in Cyprus. Cyprus again? Yeah. My goodness. Another Cyprus connection? Yes. We're trying to keep track of all the states and countries, so appreciate you guys give your location, especially if you're out of the state of Idaho or even out of the United States. I'll read your partial list here in a bit of what we've had around the country. We had one from Jolly Good England this morning. Lisi spinning in the paint. Out to Lawn. Whips a nice pass inside. That shot was checked, I think. Gonzalez had her shot altered, and here come the bees and a traveling violation. I think Gonzalez would have been better served to go straight up for that shot, but she elected to put it on the floor and drew a little crowd and kind of altered her shot. We have had these states, Wyoming, Nevada, Alaska, California, Oklahoma, Texas, Oregon, Arizona, Montana, Washington, Maine, and of course Idaho. We've had England. Paul thought we had Canada, but it was wrong. <laughs> There's a drive by Hammond. No good. Loose ball picked up by Searle. Up ahead. They go in to Garner. The left-handed shot somehow rims out. And a rebound controlled by Lawn. Quickly, the Vikes up the floor. Baseline, Jay counts if it goes. It won't go, but Young will get a couple of free throws. The so first of the night for the Middleton Vikes. The Vikings are the kind of team that, even if you make a basket, they have someone grabbing the ball, stepping out of bounds, and they're pressing like it's a fast break, even on a made basket. That's their style. They're an up-tempo uh, up team. They love the transition game. Well, you know what I like about them is looking in the, in the state tournament, they got six players that have scored like a double digits or more in, in, in uh, points for the tournament and evenly spaced around. So who do you cover? 
Yeah, you know, there's no one real big star on the team. It's a very, it's a very balanced team. Yeah. Four girls back from last year's title uh, team as well. So, I think Gonzalez is leading the team in scoring in the tournament. But you're right, you can't pick one girl. And there's a three-pointer from the corner. Michaela Keck got that one. She had four, four last night. 14. Four of them. Four last night. She opened the game open in the third quarter against Jerome. Can't leave her open. In the paint is Lisey. She better shoot. Thought she might get a three-second call, but she got rid of the ball and got out of there. Long with the basketball now. And there's going to be a traveling violation on Hammond. I was talking with a few referees, and they say the point of emphasis this year was the calling the traveling. Yep. And we've seen a ton of traveling in the four A's, at least. Oh, here, too. Yeah. That was in... I talked to the refs the very first game my son played as a sophomore at Boise High, and I was asking about a traveling call where kid dove for the ball, got it, and slid about six feet. There was no call, and they said... As long as you're sliding, you're okay. But when you come to a stop, you can't rotate it all. And I said, well, okay. Then he said, yep, we're looking at traveling. That's yep. our point of emphasis. Another email coming in. Denver fans love the bees. And Katie Harker, go Bonneville. That's Denver. from Kate Finley from Denver, Colorado. Okay, we just added a new state to the list. Shot inside, no good. Rebounded by Gonzalez. Fourteen fourteen is our game. Three pointer on the way, no good. Searle oh, and Young battling for it, and Young wins, and then the ball thrown away. Save the bees have it. Nice little flurry of activity. Girls going all out, leaving nothing down there. Searle over to Keck. Then Garner. Now they're going to kick it back up top and reset. Searle has it on the wing. Driving baseline, Harker. There it is. Another traveling violation. Got to put the ball on the wood before you take that step. Unless, of course, you make $16 million a game and yes. you play in the NBA. Then you can take four steps. Then you can take a couple steps. And you're fine. Yeah. Go get a pop, come back, <laughs> take another step. Get fouled, take four steps, and they'll give you continuation. <laughs> Lisi loses it, and Keck has it. In the front court to Harker. Garner. Oh, look at the Middleton Pep Club. They're going crazy over there. Lisi's going to take a seat. I like her little uh, reverse pivot step. She uses her left hand extremely well and attacks the middle of the court. She's a very good point guard. She doesn't have to score to be effective. She's that kind of ball player. She's kind of a coach's dream. Yeah, if you distribute the rock and draw a crowd, it certainly opens up things for uh, for your offense to do. She can score if she has to. She, I think she had 12 last night, but in game one, she had nothing, and she still played very very well. Harker gets double teamed, so she'll kick it back out. Oh, a three-pointer by Keck, two in a row. And it's 17-14, the Bees by three. Simmons in the front court with a left-handed dribble over to Lim. Straight away. She'll come into the free throw line. Simmons at three-point country. Lim now in the paint will step through. They're going to call a traveling violation. Well, um, in terms of numbers and enthusiasm right now, I can see my best pep club so far in the 5A tournament, Glenn. It's the Middleton Vikings. We're going to give a pep club at a tournament, and uh, well, the, the, that stands have never been completely filled until Middleton showed up. Of course, it helps when you're close, but still, the kids are here. We've seen some other 5A schools that close that had nobody. Yeah. Mountain View comes to mind. So nice to see the Viking fans out here supporting their girls in their quest for a state ring. Garner has it. Searle will drive to the... Free throw line, give it in to Garner. She'll shoot, no good, but she's fouled, and she'll go back to the free throw line. She's that, one of two there earlier. If that's Gonzalez, I think that's two on her. That is Gonzalez. She got caught a little bit away from the basket, and uh, we had Garner make a nice move. 
to the hoop. Gonzalez fouled him. First free throw up. Snaps the net. All right, here's my trivia question for the 4A game. Emailers, come in with this answer. Three schools are tied with seven all-time girls' state titles. Which three schools have seven state titles? Any category, any classification, doesn't matter. Three schools. Shot off oh. balance by Gonzalez, no good, but the Gonzalez will get a couple of free throws now. 5'11 senior. Not taking Gonzalez out with two fouls and just a couple minutes to go, but might need her presence down there underneath to battle to battle Garner. Yeah. Seven seniors on the Bees, six seniors on the Vikings. So there'll be some new jerseys opening up for our JV girls next year, both of these squads. You look at West Jeff, as good as they were, one by 20. Every starter coming back. The 2A schools know who the team to beat is. Next free throw crawls over the rim. Gonzalez with three. Have another email coming in from Jocko and Jared Stutzman from Idaho Falls say, Go Bees. A lot of B fans writing in tonight. Glenn's trying to answer my trivia question. No. Did I get these two? You got two of them, but not three of them. Can't tell you which ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a mulligan anyhow. Jeff, we're giving free mulligans for trivia answers. If you golf, that's the Paul Kingsbury gift. A mulligan anywhere on the course, anytime. It doesn't have to be on the tee box. Does Paul golf? Uh, not without mulligans. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. There's a ball kicked out of bounds. Off of Keck, so it'll be Middleton basketball. They trail by three. Great. Does the mulligan have to be in golf? Like, say I die, can I call a mulligan and come back and live for another <laughs> no, while No, it's longer? just golf, man. Dang it. He's going to hold that one. Parker almost got a clean pick there. She'd have had a breakaway layup. And that's going to be a blocking foul. Looking at the team fouls, Middleton for Bonneville. It's going to have four now. So no bonus yet with a buck 36 to go in our half. Bonneville 18, Middleton 15. The repeat of last year's state championship game won by the Bees. There's a loose ball out of bounds. Did it go off of Lim? Yes, it did. It'll be a turnover. Middleton won in 2008 under Andy Jones, and I think that's their only title. And there's a turnover. Bonneville won last year. They won in 2005 under Tracy Peterson. And I'm just checking to see if Bonneville ever won. No. So Bonneville with two titles, the Vikings with one. Step through, little hook shot by Foreman, no good. And we got a minute 12 to go. The B's with it and a three point lead. Harker to Garner. They left her alone at the elbow. Didn't want the shot. Now she'll take a free throw jumper off the back iron, no good. I like yeah. that play though. There's a pass whipped into Foreman just a little bit too far away from her and the ball goes out of bounds. Another email from uh, Brad Ball. He says, we're from UConn and rooting for the Bees. Thanks, Brad. UConn. UConn up in Idaho Falls. Kind of Idaho Falls okay. area. I thought we had another Canada one, Paul. <laughs> oh, you can't hear <laughs> This is U-C-O-N, not Y-U-K-O-N. <laughs> U-C-O-N, not Y-K. Nice. <laughs> do the Bees want the last shot? They'd have to kill about 35 no. seconds if they do. That's not their way. They go for their first good shot they get. There's a loose ball. The Vikes have it. Up ahead. They throw it for Foreman. She catches it. She'll lay it up. Miss. And a rebound in there by Keck. And a quick timeout. Oh, no. Interesting timeout by Bonneville with 22.1 seconds to go. An education system isn't worth much. If it teaches young people how to make a living, but it doesn't teach them how to live. High school activities are the other half of education, where lessons in living are an everyday occurrence. Self-discipline, the ability to work with others, fair play. These are the lessons that Idaho high school activities are made of. 
This message brought to you as a public service by the Idaho High School Activities Association. Don't forget, DVDs are available for all the games during the 2010 Real Dairy Shootout. A high-quality DVD playable on your TV so you can watch all the excitement again and again to order yours. Just click on the banner at the bottom of the web class cast player. It includes the post-game ceremonies, handing out of the trophies, the banner, and uh, pictures by all of our uh, IdahoSports.com photographers down there on the floor, accompanied by Paul's personal choice of music. We're going to have John Bellitz on as a halftime guest, the executive director of the IHSAA. Lindley with the basketball over to Searle. Seven seconds to go. Now they go baseline to Keck. The ball is stolen, and there's a buzzer. A low-scoring first half is over. It's the Bonneville V's 18, the Middleton Vikings 15. You're enjoying the real dairy shootout on autosport.com, and we'll be back after this timeout. Got milk? Well, we didn't get to the halftime stats because of the interview, but Glenn maybe can run some down during free throws and stuff. I could do points real quick. Garner, eight. Keck, six. Lindley, four. Uh, for the Middleton Vikings, Young, six. Gonzalez, three. Maddie under Lawn. Say it again. Maddie Lawn hit under from underneath. That's four for her. She's got four. And uh, Foreman and Hammond had two. So it's a one-point lead, Bonneville 18, Middleton 17. There's a shot, free throw line off the iron, good for the blood, but bad for the average. Bingo. Paul didn't have the headset on. They always do a sound effect on that one, Jeff, for me. I don't, I don't, don't ask me why, I have no idea. Stole that one from the Detroit Pistons announcer. I steal everything, nothing's original. Three-pointer is good. That one by Young, and the Middleton Vikings are back on top by two. First five points scored in this quarter by the Vikes. Looks to be an excellent game. This is the kind we like to settle the championship. And that's going to be Hammond crashing into Searle. That should be a, a personal. First team foul here in the second half. And the second on Emily Hammond, a senior at 5'7". Some emails coming in. Thanks, IdahoSports.com. It's just like being there. Mike and Karen Harker from Ridgecrest, California are watching for Katie Harker and the mighty Bonneville Bees to repeat. Go Bees. Okay, you had a trivia answer in there. Yes, if you could I did. get uh, that, and we'll see what... There's a turnover. Bikes have a three-on-one fast break. Nice pass underneath, and Hammond will lay it in. That's their game. They're a transition team. They can get 10, 12 points in a hurry. 22, 18, four points. I believe this will be the biggest lead the Vikes have enjoyed. Garner. Tried to get inside, but Lawn doing a good job in there on her. Here's an answer to the question, or a potential answer, from uh, Ryan uh, Bennon. Uh, he guessed uh, Coeur d'Alene, Highland, and Moscow. Uh, I gotta look at my answer. No, that's not right. Ryan, you are incorrect. Try again, sir. There's a shot, no good, by Garner. I lost my answer key. Oh, here it is. It's right here, Gary. That one, that one, and that one. <laughs> yeah, Glenn knows them. Was Ryan he, good? Uh, Ryan had one of them. One of them. Are we gonna tell which one? Should we? No, let's wait. Okay, we'll wait. Shot inside, number 21. Young gets her fifth point this quarter. And it's suddenly a six-point Middleton lead. I expected to see a timeout there by Bonneville, but they're going to play through it right now. Our trivia question, three schools are tied all-time with seven girls' state titles. Who are the three schools with seven state titles? Gary, I got it right, but I've had two misses also. It gets a little late. I'll, I'll tell you which one of those was right. Up ahead, shot inside. It's good for Gonzalez. And it's all Vikings right now. Middleton is in Fuego. Three-pointer 
by Harker. And a timeout on the floor. Five point Middleton lead, 26 21. Idaho's dairy farm family is a proud sponsor of this year's high school championship basketball games. As usual, it's been an exciting season right down to the wire. The United Dairymen of Idaho is committed to youth development by sponsoring student activities during the year through their partnership with the Idaho High School Activities Association. No matter your age, milk, cheese, and yogurt provide calcium and eight other essential nutrients that will help you build stronger bones and better bodies. Dairy, food for life. Emails coming in, lots, lots, and lots of emails now. Hey, broadcasters, you rock. Thanks for posting live this webcast. You're making our day. John and Jessica Means watching from Manhattan, New York. Nice. Our first New Yorker. Uh, how do you say that one, New Yorker? Oh, he says, uh, here's our second half shout-out. Go, Erica Shenton. Go, Bees. Also, Luella Campbell says, good luck to the Bees from the Campbells in St. George, Utah. St. George, all right. There's a new state for us. Lauren Hall writes in, Washington from Idaho Falls. My older sister is a cheerleader for Bonneville. Want to give a shout out to the team and shout out and say, Go Bees, Lauren Hall. Nice. I'm going to give a shout out to my son who turned 16 today. He's a sophomore at Boise High. How's that? Although he's probably not watching. Five point Middleton Lee. They jumped out quick here in the start of the third period. Hammond with the basketball over to Young. B still in that chick-to-chick -chick defense. Hammond whips one inside, and it's stolen, but it went right into the arms of Gonzalez, and she'll lay it in, and it's fouled. Boy, Searle stole that and was not flat on the ground and lost the handle, and it bounced right down to Gonzalez, who put it up and in and was fouled. 28-21, seven-point lead for the Bikes. Chance to increase it to eight here with a made throw. That one short, no good. Rebounded by Garner. Bees trying to be the third school to win back-to-back -back titles this year in 2010. Richfield and West Jeff have already done it. Lapway had a chance, but lost in overtime. And of course, in our next game, uh, Coeur d'Alene has a chance to three-peat. As they take on the Lewis and Bengals. And last year we had, or last game, we had a first-time winner. Yeah, Priest River for the first time in their school's history. Always nice to see them get off the snide, get the monkey off their back, and get a banner in their gym. There'll be a nice pep club at Priest River coming up. Pep uh, assembly, rather. The Vikes working the ball around well. Now they get it into Gonzalez. Point blank. What oh, oh, is good. Oh. Oh, a huge big time move by Gonzalez to go around Garner. That was a good offensive possession for the Vikes. 30 to 21 now. Vikings by nine. And a foul going to be whistled inside. That was on Lim. See how many Kendra has. That's two for her. Two. Three team fouls for the Vikes. One for the Bees. Is there a story behind how Bonneville became the bees? Is there, they make a lot of honey there? Something to that effect? Garner, shot no good, but she's fouled. You're from Eastern Idaho, Jeff. What's the bees story? The only thing I know about Bonneville is that back in the day, it used to be, it's a, con a conglomeration of four smaller schools that they do the budget cuts. They combine all schools into one, and that's Bonneville. I think it was uh, Yukon and Ammon and a couple other smaller high schools in the area all made into one big school. I'm not sure how the B mascot came into play, though. Free throw is good. I like it. Because one reason, it's the only one. I mean, there's eight Tigers in the state and eight Bulldogs in the state, so it's a very common one. I was surprised when Columbia opened, they picked the Wildcats, which is, you know, a fairly common one. Kind of nice to see different nicknames, like the Riverhawks for uh, Canyon Ridge. I, I like that one. Searle cuts in front, has a steal, coast to coast, left-handed layup. Actually, she used her right hand from the left side, and she's fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. Searle been quiet tonight. She had no points in the first half, missed all her field goal attempts, and missed her only free throw attempt. Seven-point Middleton lead, 30-23, 3.25 to go. 
in the third. First free throw by Searle is good, and she's on the board. So Bonneville's used to being down in the tournament. They were down early to Jerome. They were down early to Bishop Kelly. They came back and won both games, so this is not new territory for the Bees at all. And they won that one game against BK in overtime. In OT. Great ball game. You know, one of the things they're putting on the line is an undefeated season. There's a pressure that you get your first loss in the state title game, which would be not good. And that's one thing about an undefeated team. You know, if you've lost, you, that isn't part of the equation. Middleton doesn't care. 24-1, and one, they... They've already had their one loss. And yeah, they I, lost to Jerome earlier in the year. Yeah, and I always think when you're undefeated, there's just a little bit more pressure on you because of that goose egg always being in the loss column. Can you do it a whole season? Three-pointer outside, no good. Harker with the rebound. Up ahead to Searle. Inside to Garner. And now Keck will get it. They go inside. The ball's checked by Lawn. Here come the Vikes. All the way down. Shot off glass is good by Foreman. That was a tough thing and a steal. Simmons has a bucket. Bonneville may need, may, they may need to, may, yeah, excuse me, they may need, need a timeout here. A nine point lead. The Middleton fans are starting to go crazy over there. I thought a couple times, you're right, Jeff, that they need uh, some momentum timeouts and the Bees are just hanging on to it. Not calling it. And look at Lawn. She was fired up. Did you she see is, that? She is raring to go, isn't she? Well, she was really excited, even though they called a foul on Middleton. She, that was some enthusiasm there, baby. I think it's just a game. It's a little bit more than that. First free throw was good. You can just get that fired up about your golf game, Glenn. I think you can take a five or six strokes off. Ron. She's fired up. She is extremely fired up. Look at her. And that does nothing but carry over to your teammates. Yes. It's like you have an infectious disease and everybody catches it. And it's a good disease to catch, to have everybody get fired up, get the adrenaline going, get the emotions flowing. This is for all the marbles. He's, some of these seniors on this team never get another chance. And there's going to be a timeout on the floor. It's a not eight-point Viking lead, 2.08 to go in the third period. We'll return to Idaho Sports right after this. Got milk? <laughs> Glenn, i got to tell you a story. I get a warm feeling every time I see the Middleton Vikings, I'll tell you why. They came to our gym in New Plymouth maybe eight years ago. I get the program. Yes, the, for the first time in my life, I saw a girl named Gary. G-A-R-I-E was her name, and she was playing in our gym. And just thought that was pretty cool to have a girl named Gary. I'll never forget that. She was a lot cuter than me, too, I can tell you that. I'm not going to touch it, Gary. I'm going to leave it alone. Well, I didn't think there would ever be a girl out there named Gary. I'm just glad to know there's one female named Gary out there. I don't know if there's a girl named Jeff. There is Glenn Close, the actress. There's a boy named Sue. There's <laughs> so. a boy named Sue. If they call a girl Jeff, they'd have to go Jeffy, like Gary. And a heart would dot the eye. <laughs> <laughs> that a, now, was that a, they just switched from a zone to a man there? And nearly a steal by Harker. But a foul, and... Lisey holding her head. Did they call that on Lisey? Wow. I that was on Harker. Oh, I did too. Lisey looked like she got hit in the head. Wow. No, they're going to talk about it. No. Nope. Yeah, they're going to talk about this. No, no they're going to shoot free throws. Fouls. Wow. Well, that's the one thing not in Middleton's favor is they enjoy an eight-point lead. So they Lisey have seven fouls and Bonneville only two. She's so, going down to the end of the bench to take a look at her eye maybe. Bonneville shooting free throws the rest of this game on any foul. The first one up by Harker is good. And you can see that with only two team fouls on Bonneville, the Middleton Vikings a long way from bonus. Bonneville is a very good free throw shooting team, as I jinxed Katie Harker. Searle, Harker. See, he uh, believes Peck. in the jinx, too. Glenn. Oh, I do. I do big time. He, my brother doesn't. Oh, it's there. It, oh, it, oh, it's, it's real. There. It, it's real. Oh, it's real. It's coming down. Look, <laughs> he's, he's a veteran broadcaster. He's, he's jinxed a lot of people in this time like <laughs> I have. 
I feel but bad, too. You didn't jinx the girl that was 14 of 14 the other night. I didn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shot inside, no good, and Harker with the rebound. Here come the Bees. Trailing by seven. Inside to Garner. Left-handed layup is good. Bonneville's famous for making runs. We can see a run right here from Bonneville. Lawn has it. She'll drive in. Shot off glass. No good. Nice effort. And a rebound by Searle. 34-29. A buck to go in the third. Three-point. No good. Rebounded by Lim. Lim harassed in the backcourt, but she'll whip a pass to Foreman. Ball quickly in the front court. That's Lawn, no good. And here come the Bees buzzing down the court quickly. Three-pointer for Harker, no good. Rebounded by Foreman. What a nice pass up ahead to Simmons. Can she control it? There's a shot. If it goes, it does. And Young is fouled. And what I like about that play is you get that ball up into the basket while your partner is down on the floor and the three-second clock is ticking for the key. She had to do something because I don't think uh, Long could have gotten out of the f of the key in time. Young has seven points in this quarter, 13 in the game. Nice. That's coming out strong in the second half. And she's a perfect 2 of 2 from the free throw line, and I didn't change her. She's a oh. perfect 3 of 3. I think they were taking a break. They must not have been paying attention. Oh, you know, they, they need breaks every now and again. 37-29. 28 seconds to go. Middleton on top. There's a nice drive down the paint by Harker. You can't fall asleep on either team. Seven points for Harker in this quarter. Up ahead to Lawn. Lawn stutter step. The ball slapped away from her. Diving for it. Out of bounds. It'll be Middleton basketball. Seven seconds to go in the third. Plenty of time to get a shot up. Look for something here going to the basket. Either Lacey Young, maybe even Kendra Lim, going to the basket, looking for contact. Lawn gets it well away from the bucket. They better hurry. She tries. Oh. She knew it. Four seconds to go for the Bees. Can they get a shot off? They're probably going to need a pass into the front court in order to do it. Let's see if they can pull that off. They go into the backcourt. I just doubt they're going to get a shot off. A good one anyway. Searle's got it. Up to Harker. She'll shoot. And I think that was checked. Three quarters are in the books. Middleton 37, Bonneville 31. We'll return for the fourth and final period of play. We're right after this. Well, just looking at the quarter scoring. 22 for the Vikings in that quarter. 13 for the Bees. The Vikes scored more points in the third quarter than they did in the first two quarters combined. That's a thing that makes coaches lose their hair, scratch their hair, the gray hair falls out. How does stuff like that happen? The girls just caught fire. What they did, they really came out at the start of that period on fire. And all those shots that have fallen for Bonneville the last two games didn't fall in the third quarter. So one quarter to side the champion. Both of these teams have tasted this state championship in the last few years. Who's going to taste it now? That's Harker with the basketball. Bikes in that man-to-man. -man. Baseline jumper will fall in for Erica Shenton, her first field goal. That ball just floated out of her hands. She's played really well off the bench this whole tournament for Bonneville. Back to a four-point Middleton lead. Going to be a dandy ball game here to settle the championship. And Lisi back in the game after taking a shot to her head. She's just fine. Gonzalez, ball fakes, puts her player in the popcorn machine, shoots up. No good, but she was fouled. That's a heads-up play recognizing a mismatch underneath and taking advantage of it. Couldn't get the shot to fall, but... That's team foul number four on Bonneville and seven for Middleton. Free throw off the back rim, no good. Free email. throw, it always comes down to free throws like in the fourth quarter. Email the right here, OB and Bear and Cassie rooting for Lacey Young and the Vikes on to victory. Love the service, guys. Thank you from Doug. Both free throws, no good. No, no uh, 
trivia answers yet. Nope, we just had the one, which was wrong. What three teams have the most titles in school history for the girls? And there's three schools that have seven state titles. Who are they? I'll give you one of the... He had one of them right. If I don't hear an email soon, I'll give you one of the three because that it, last emailer had one of the three. Is it Coeur Yeah. I'll give it to you. It's Coeur Who are the other two? Free throw up and good. So you know what can happen tonight? Coeur d'Alene can take sole possession of that most state titles if they win tonight. You're right about free throw shooting for the Bees, Jeff. They do it well. Yep. Championship teams do the fundamentals very well. And guess what? Middleton was up by, what, nine? And it's a two-point lead now. The Bees have come buzzing back into the game. Driving. Shot on the way. Goes oh, in. Oh, nice shot. It spun around like a motorcycle going around a barrel several times. It finally went in. And then Hammond picks up a foul right at half court. That was a great move by uh, Hammond. And using her left hand to get the ball, or right hand to get the ball up there as the Boy, shoes the, underneath. You can just feel how everybody in the gym is on the edge of their seat on a shot like that. One side just praying for it to fall in, one side praying for it to rim out. People like us, we don't care. We'll just announce it. And both of them go, oh! Yeah. There's some adrenaline being, the adrenaline gland in this gym for a lot of people is going full time. Free throw by Harker, no good. All the way down, ball strip, and a foul whistled against the Bees. It's going to go against Searle. Yeah, and Searle just hung on to the ball. Didn't say anything. She's been quiet tonight. Yeah, uh, Searle, two points, Jeff, a couple of free throws in the third. That's it. 31 points, double-digit boards, and four or five assists coming into this game, and not much from her as the first one clanks off the front of the rim. We have a new state to add to the list, I think. Uh, greetings from Tennessee, from OB. Where I read this one, Paul? OB, what? You didn't say Tennessee. Oh, sorry. OB and Bear watching from Tennessee. All right, the Volunteer State. Both free throws missed by Simon. So the Vikes are 0 of 4 from the charity stripe here to start this fourth period of play. They lead by four. Could have been a lot more if they were hitting those free throws. Loose ball, and it's going to be a jump ball. Which way the arrow going? Middleton Vikings. I missed the jump ball. I'm, I'm old school. I don't like well, the so arrow. Well, so Paul. I don't like the arrow. Well, the only reason we like it is to speed the game up, because sometimes there can be like 20 jump balls. And then you know how they fight for a position. they got to wait yeah. to get everybody set. But it penalizes, it penalizes the defense sometimes. You know? Yeah. And then sometimes it rewards them. True. Because <laughs> the arrow's pointing. Is it half <laughs> empty or half full? <laughs> well, Paul was always saying, you could tie somebody up and get the ball back. I say, Paul, what if you just tied up Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? I don't think you would get the tip every time. <laughs> well, Paul would have a tough time tying anybody up from the bench. What you do, you teach your kid to stand on the foot of the guy they're jumping against, and uh, that helps. Yeah, I think it's a penalty, but the refs will never see it. Three-pointer for Middleton, no good. Fighting for a rebound was Foreman can't get it. It'll be B's basketball. Foreman gave it a heck of a try to gather that ball, but it just hit the end line. Uh, we have another email about the trivia question. All righty. They guess Snake and Shelly. No. Nope. Port big... Lane and two others. Neither of those was correct. All right. Try again, guys. Thank you, JJ, for the email, though. Searle in the paint, no good. The ball tipped, almost went in. I think that was Harker. Up ahead of the pack was Foreman, but they couldn't see her. She could have had a layup. Still a four-point lead for the Vikes. A timeout for the Vikes. 5.07 to go in our state title game. Four-point Viking lead. We'll return to the Rio Dairy Shootout right after this. Give us the mascot, Paul. The B. Zoom, zoom. These fans want to see him. You got to love. Look at that B. Is that awesome? Every school needs to bring a mascot. Even if you're a potato, you dress up in a big potato suit. Didn't they have somebody last? Was it last year or two years ago? Somebody the Russets. I think they did. I think they had somebody. Shelly has a potato as a mascot, yeah. A potato yeah, suit. I the mighty Russets. So. 
Yeah, but I think we I think we saw him dressed up like a potato, little arms and legs sticking out of a is a russet or brown or red potato. I hate to plead ignorant in Idaho, but how would you like to be dressed up as a banana yeah. slug? <laughs> <laughs> or an anteater. Ooh, the man. Irvine anteater. Oh man. <laughs> That'd be rugged. I would love to be a wampus cat someday though. Big old tail with a big whomping ball on the end. That'd be awesome. 39-35. <laughs> There's a steal. Searle has it. Trying to get her first field goal, and she does. That's her game. She plays the passing line really well. It's a nail-biter. Two-point game, 39-37. There's some nervous fans now in this place. 4-33 and counting in the title game. Simmons over to Lisi. Lisi fends off her defender, Harker. And now they'll cross over to Lem. Foreman. 4-10 and counting. B's doing a good job on the defensive end right now. Staying in that chick-to-chick -chick defense. Vikings looking for a backdoor cut off this. And another timeout. Andy Jones wants to talk about it. Let's keep it right here for this timeout. Excitement, thrills, suspense are all available during the season as high school athletes are showcased all across this great state. Boys and girls athletic programs provide the best in entertainment, sportsmanship, and community involvement. Don't miss any of them. Support your team, schools, and community by attending these exciting events. This message brought to you by the Idaho High School Activities Association. Real quickly, in the 1A's, uh, Richfield, uh, the winner, Kerry, runner-up, third place, Dietrich, Consolation Summit. Clearwater won the 1A's, Division 1, Lapway second, Raft River third, Chalice Consolation. West Jeff won the 2A, Soda Springs runner-up, New Plymouth third, Parma Consolation. Kellogg won the 3A, Weezer third place, Sugar Salem Consolation. Priest River won the 3A, I said Kellogg second, excuse me. Jerome won third place, BK Consolation the 4A. What name are we going to put at the 4A title, the Bees or the Vikes? <coughs> Bikes by two, 342 to go. There's oh, a ball thrown yeah. away. Young couldn't run it down, and the Bees with a chance to tie. Well, she saw Sertel jumping the passing lane. It kind of passed a little bit too far out in front of her. Threw it away. Yeah, she didn't want Sertel on another breakaway layup. Exactly. Keck with it now. She'll hand off to Harker, who will assume the point guard responsibility. She's directing traffic. Guarded by Lisi. Garner well away from the bucket right there. That's where the Vikes would like to see her. She's going to drive on Lawn. Fall down. They'll call a foul on Lawn. And Garner's going to go to the line to shoot two. She is four of six from the charity stripe here in this championship game. That's a little accidental trip. You know, the Vikes had 22 in the third. Over halfway through the fourth, they have two. Free throw, no good for Garner. Middleton retains their two-point lead. Or you could say they've got 24 points so far in the second half. That's the <laughs> other way to look at them. Which is more than they had in the first half, more than the Bees had. <laughs> Our score was 18-15 at that half. The Bees were up by three. Second free throw by Garner is good. She gets one of two. And it's the slimmest of margins for the Vikes, one. All right, Lisi in the front court. Gonzalez trying to post up on Garner. And what they call there? It's a little, little nickel dimer out front on Middle Parker, I believe. Middleton 10 fouls, so they're already put Bonneville in the double bonus. And Middleton has yet to shoot a bonus free throw in this second half. They will next time. As Bonneville has six. Lon jumps out to get the inbounds pass and hands off to Lisi. Middleton nursing a one-point lead. Hammond picks up a dribble, needs some help. Finds Lisi in the paint, off glass, no good. Stolen. That's Gonzalez who puts it back up and she's fouled. Wow, that's a great move by Gonzalez to get the ball up. You can see why they struggle when she's in foul trouble. She's a big presence inside. Uh, I'm just chuckling to myself because nobody near us liked that call. No. You could hear our microphones. There were people booing. and 
I would not want to be a referee. There is no, they, you couldn't pay me enough. First free throw is good by Middleton. I thought it was a good call. Two-point lead for the Vikes. This could be a three-point lead. I'm pretty near you, too, here. Oh. And Gonzalez, who missed her last three free throws, knocks two in a row down. And it's 41-38. Three-point Middleton lead. <laughs> there's a lot of feverish fans around us. Hey, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of angry bees around <laughs> here. <laughs> I hope these aren't those... Uh, those Boy, what are the bees that came into our country? I can't remember what they called them. The killer bees. Yeah, the killer bees from South America. Searle to Harker. Garner back to Searle. 2.17 to go. Garner well away from the post. The Vikings will say, go ahead and shoot that. We don't care. Searle will drive baseline. Stop. Pop. Front iron. No good. Garner with the putback, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be Middleton basketball. Yeah, I think uh, Susan Lindley is lucky she didn't get called over the back foul there. Apparently the B fans didn't like that call either. Yeah, if we were sitting on the other side, you'd hear the same from the Middleton fans. It's a roller coaster ride as a fan. You're cheering one minute, booing the next. All right, we're going to keep the timeout right here, and I'll make my color men the uh, the coaches for a bit all right jeff you're the vikings you're on that side of the gym what are you doing to protect the three-point lead fine middleton i want to take the ball to the basket i want to draw contact i want to get bonneville in more foul trouble middleton's a good free throw shooting team so you're not going to be in your three girl weave staying away from the bucket waiting to go no, i play my game i do what brought me here all right glenn you're the bees what are you doing you're down by three well i like that it's too early to foul you have to play good defense, look to cut off the passing lanes, and just play tough man-up defense. But when you see it get down to about, oh, a, a buck 15, buck 10, down to about a minute, um, they have to start fouling. Right now, it is just a one-possession game for Bonneville. Look at that. They laid the ball down for Middleton. You see that once in a while when they get out of a timeout. But heads up for Simmons. She went racing over there because they start the five-second clock, and there's a foul. That was nearly going to be a five-second call, but number 11 fouled number 11. And so the Vikings are going to get their first bonus free throw. We have an email answer to the trivia question, and I think they got it right. It's from uh, Ryan Benyon, Grangeville, Prairie, and CDA. He got it. Now, Ryan, <laughs> hey. you, go, get, Ryan? you get a free mulligan next time you play anywhere on the courts. It's a Paul Kingsbury rule. Thank you very much. Uh, Blake Larson also got it right. We'll give him a mulligan, too. And you guess Coeur d'Alene can break that tie. They can become the greatest female school for state championships if they win against Lewis. And they'll have eight, and they'll be ahead of the pack. The right. Ravens are uh, trading fouls here. That was uh, number 11, Kendra Lim for Middleton, sending number 11, Susan Lindley to the line. One difference is the bees are in the double bonus. It wouldn't have mattered. She made the first anyway. Bonneville with just eight fouls. There's still one more one and one for the bikes before they can get to the double bonus. Both free throws. Good us back to a one-point game. And a 30-second timeout. An educational system isn't worth much if it teaches young people how to make a living, but it doesn't teach them how to live. High school activities are the other half of education, where lessons and living are an everyday occurrence. Self-discipline, the ability to work with others, fair play. Yes, these are the lessons that high school activities are made of. This message brought to you as a public service by the Idaho High School Activities Association. IdahoSports.com Game Streams production presented by the United Dairymen of Idaho. We'd also like to thank the companies and businesses that make these webcasts possible. United Dairymen of Idaho, Les Schwab Tire Centers of Idaho, University of Phoenix, North Idaho College, WannaPlayCollegeSports.com, NBC Team and Individual Sport Camps, and Town Place Suites in Meridian. Thank you for your sponsorship. Well, here we go. 136 to go. One point Middleton lead. It's been a long time since Bonneville had the lead. They've cut it to one a couple times. Middleton has had an answer just about every time. All right, Middleton going to inbound it against Shirley. Some full court pressure by the Bees. One point ball game. Fans 
starting to get on their feet. It's going to be standing time. Ball knocked out of bounds by Searle. Yeah, she's in that passing line once again. Now the ball is going to be over on the side instead of the baseline. And they'll get it in to Gonzalez. She'll hand off to Lisi. Lisi now gets it to Gonzalez over the timeline. Cool. Cool. Get it to Lisi. Lisi will drive. Still a man-to-man -man defense for Bonneville. Ball over to Simmons. Buck 17 and counting. Simmons creates space with a crossover and a back step. And now we're going to get a foul. It's going to come down to free throws. The Vikes have missed five. The Vikes are two of seven unofficially on my book here in this fourth period. At the line, Simmons, who I had earlier, 0 of 2. Well, you can win at the line. You can also lose at the line. Bonneville's been money this tournament at the, at the line. This is the last one and one of the game. And it's good. Oh, big high arcing shot by yeah. Simmons. Two-point Viking lead, buck 12 to go. This is the way championships should be settled. In exciting close games. Next one, no good. And that's Lindley with the rebound. So the B's a chance to tie, perhaps take a lead if they want to go for three. Parker over the timeline. One minute to go. Look at all the fans starting to stand up on this side. Searle to Hark. Oh, did you want yep. yep. Yes, you did. Got to put the ball on the wood first That's before you make the move. All right. Bikes just got to inbound and then wait to get fouled. So they'll be in the double bonus this next time. Can they get it in, though? No. Oh, they, they throw did. it over Len's oh, hand, man. and it's a turnover. Credit the defense of the Bees for that one. No, I don't like that pass no. from the baseline. Do you? No, they should have had someone coming to the ball. Yeah. Yep. You can break away and come late to the ball and get open, but yep. we're up here and they're down there. 50 seconds to go. Parker over the timeline. Going to come around a Lindley pick. In the paint, soft jumper, it's good. The tie. Tie ball game. Ahead of the pack is Gonzalez. She gets it inside. Oh, Shot oh. on the way by Simmons, no good. Another putback, it's good by Gonzalez. Oh, oh, oh. 27 seconds. Mike's by two. Parker double team. Jump ball. Arrow. Or a timeout. The refs are going to find out. I think they're going to give him the timeout. Wow. Wow. Whoa, what a great timeout by Herrick Pelt to get that man for the jump ball. I don't know which way the arrow was pointing, but if it was pointing Middleton's way, that was the finest timeout that coach has ever called. <laughs> well, that's why, that, that's why he's 24 0 this year. Jeff, you've watched the Bees for three games now. If you're Coach Herrick Pelt, which player are you running? Well, wait, they don't have the ball, do they? Bonneville has the ball. Which player are you running a uh, um, play for? I want to go inside to Garner. I want to play pick and roll with Garner and Harker or Garner and Searle. Look for Garner on the block, on the pick and roll. Easy bucket. Maybe she can draw a foul for the three-point play. You don't need a three if you're Bonneville. A two-point, you tie it up, you're okay. Yeah, and, and any foul anywhere on the floor, uh, you're automatically at the line shooting two. And uh, you're at a one-possession game right there, right now. And if you miss immediately foul. Yeah. You have to foul. Don't even go for the steal. Just foul. Yeah, you don't go for the steal. Go for the foul. Stop the clock. It's only 20.4 ticks left. All right. They're going to be inbounding right there on the three a day in front of the B's bench. Now, remember, the B's can go backcourt. You can actually go backcourt off any pass any time. Inbounding anyway. And Harker has it. 18 seconds to go. Baseline drive, shot no good. She gets her own rebound, puts it back, misses again. This time the Vikes wow. have it, a jump ball. Now we're going to see which way the arrows go. Oh, the Bonnie bees throwing the bees give it. Well, they went to Garner. She had two great looks at the basket, just couldn't put it in. Man, two two short shots right there. Nine, tired leg, maybe underneath. Nine seconds. 
Bonneville must be out of timeout, so they might have called one there. There's a good pass to Garner. She can't score. The foul. Oh, wow. Well, these are big free throws for Miley, and she's a senior. That's who you want in crunch time, a senior. Let's see if she gets frozen by the uh, coach of Middleton. Is he going to call a timeout to freeze her? Well, that's five fouls on Gonzalez. Gonzalez just fouled out of the game for Middleton. That's a tough blow right there. 5'11 senior, but I got to foul out with. Yeah. I have her unofficially for 13 points. What a heck of a game by that young lady. She was 3 of 7 from the charity stripe. If we go to overtime, that's a huge loss for Middleton. They're going to well, put in Maddie Lawn for her, though. You know, I think the girl fouling out throws Garner because she's been standing there for a while. The same thing a timeout does. Yeah. Yeah, she's had time to think about these. I don't know. Can you freeze a senior? A Hattie senior that has a state title ring on her finger. First one, no good. Now, do you miss this one? Or do you go for it and then the foul? I still make it. Let's see if she tries to make or tries to hit it purposely off the front. She's going for the make. She missed. Rebounded by Lawn. And a foul. And if the Vikings can hit both of these free throws, the fat lady's going to start singing. Wow. If she only gets one or none, it's still on for Bonneville. There's still time if you get one to get back up the court. If you get two... Yeah, if she makes one, it's still a one-possession game. What I like over there in the middle of the section, they all have splash waters. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love kids. Free throw. Oh, no oh, oh, one man. One possession game. How many timeouts does Bonneville have left? You know, they didn't call one. With, they're using they one right, right, now, right, right there. now. I was a little surprised he didn't call one with nine seconds left underneath his own hoop, but called an inbounds play instead, something you practice all the time. So 6.3 seconds. You know, here's the one argument that's always in sports. Do you miss a free throw on purpose? Because if you get it in and they could throw a long, you know, 60-foot pass. If you miss it on purpose, they have to battle for a rebound, and it takes time. It's almost like with six seconds, there's, there's no way they can get a shot up. You no, know, there's no, both no, schools no. of thought there. No. I did go for the make. You, if you make it, at the very least, they tie you with the long right, shot. Right, yeah. so that, that gives you the best opportunity to win is a, is a three-point advantage with with the other team using, you know, six, a little less than six and a half seconds to try to come up and get a shot. Here's what I like to know. If, if it's a miss and the rebound stays low, how long does it take them to get the ball inside the arc on the other end? Well, and don't More foul than six on the seconds. Rebound. Oh, yeah, you can't foul. Well, because then you're going back the other and with the shot cl uh, clock stop. And no, two, I, two I agree if she tries to make it, but if she misses, I just don't think it's that bad of a thing for Middleton because I just don't think the bees will bring it down in time to even try to get a shot up. If she makes it, there'll be a backcourt pressure. No, there it is. Here it comes. Earl, now they are going to get up quickly. Two seconds. Harker. Earl for the tie. Oh, it doesn't go. And the Middleton Vikings are state champions. Wow. What an ending. What that a ball game. Hung on the rim for the longest time. That would have been a win for Bonneville. That would have been a win. That was a three-point shot by Searle. And they proved me wrong. They got a shot off in six seconds. And they got a good shot, too. Yeah, she had a pretty decent look in the bucket right there. There was no defense in her face at all. But the Vikings avenge last year's state championship loss to the Bees by two. And we'll let you keep it right here and enjoy the trophy presentation to the runner-up and your state champion, Middleton Vikings. Well, congratulations to Middleton, hanging on, leading most of the second half, and battling right down to the end, encountering every punch that Bonneville had, including the very last haymaker swing by Searle. You know, one thing I liked about that's the most emotion by a state champion team I've seen today. Yeah, that was pretty cool. The Richfield Tigers just thought, well, we won. We were supposed to win. Middleton showed an incredible amount of emotion. I like to see that. They avenged their loss from last year, too. They lost to Bonneville last year. Exactly, and that's 
That's huge. That is big. Congrats to the Vikings. Great tournament. They had a 22-point third quarter, just a seven-point fourth quarter to hang on for dear life. So Andy Jones, two titles in three years. Not bad. Not Andy bad. won at Caldwell, too. Yeah, he did. Wow. Hey, he is a Jones. Yeah. You know, I think enough said right there. All the Joneses are winners. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, I like this guy. <laughs> All the Joneses are winners. Presentation, medals, plaque for the Middleton Vikings, but what they want the most, the banner to hang up in the gym. There's going to be a pep assembly at Middleton that's going to be a lot of fun here soon. And they'll turn that banner around and show it to the Middleton faithful on that east side of the gym.
start with the Bonneville Bees. Uh, Kylie Searle had four points. Susan Lindley, eight points. Oh, excuse me. Searle was two for two from the free throw line. Susan Lindley, four of four from the free, free throw line. Katie Harker, nine points, two of five from the charity stripe. Erica Shenton had two points. She did not take a free throw attempt. Michaela Keck had six points, did not take a free throw, had two trays. Miley Garner, Garner had... 13 points, including 5 of 10 from the free throw line. As a team, 13 to 36, 36.1 percent, uh, 13 to 21, 61.9 percent free throws. For the Middleton Lady Vikings, 
Uh, Madeline Law had four points. She missed both of her free throws. Taylor Simmons, three points, one of four from the free throw line. Uh, Lacey Young, 14 points, three of three from the three of three from the free throw line. Jenny Foreman, four points. Emily Hammond, six points, did not take a free throw. And Araya Gonzalez, <coughs> excuse me, Gary, 13 points, three of seven from the free throw line, and led her team with eight rebounds. For a team, 46 percent on 18 of 39 shooting, 7 of 17 from the free throw line, 41 percent. Well, Jeffrey, I'd like to have you back up in the booth again. Appreciate it. <coughs> and, uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's been fun. It's been a good time. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for us folks here at idosports.com. Five are out of the way. We got one to go. We hope you enjoyed watching this state title webcast as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. So for Glenn Jones, Jeff Duncan, Paul Kingsbury, this is Gary Jones. Final score, the Middleton Vikings win their second title in three years with a 44-42 victory over the Bonneville Bees. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We hope your next game is a good one.